Well, good Thursday afternoon. This is Pastor Al, First Baptist Church of Bernalillo. Glad you're here today. Um, we're going to continue with our devotional, A Word with Pastor Al. Uh, we've had some pretty cool words this week, and uh, we're into our fourth word. And, you know, the words that we've covered this week, uh, we're talking about risk and, and safety and love. All these things, um, these words, as we've uh, described them and challenged ourselves with them, maybe changed our attitude toward them. Um, there, there's a word I want to talk about tonight that I believe is something that many Christians uh, or just people in general have uh, got away from, and that is the word support. Uh, support is something that we crave, but at the same time, so many of us, and I say us because I've been in that boat too, and you know, in this this I can uh, society that we live in, and you know, I can do all things. We like to quote that, and I I, I know that it's it's huge that we want to take on the world, but I, sometimes I don't think it's as noble as it sounds, uh, and sometimes it's just downright prideful. And um, but one of the things that this word brings to my mind is I was trying to prepare for it and uh, I thought about it a little bit but just before I came on, on on Facebook here and I I believe we we need to look for support as well. I believe support is something that we sometimes wait till we just can't do it. We, we've hit rock bottom or we've run up against the wall. Then we start looking for support. And, um, you know, even the best thinkers and creators of our time and in history as far as that goes, and they, they have found that finding a group of support uh, or people that have like-mindedness, have the same desires, um, the same drive, uh, they are able to accomplish much. And, it, it helps them to enable themselves, maybe even do a better job than what they would have originally. Uh, you know, and, and the Bible shows us that, that God didn't expect for us to do everything by ourselves. Uh, in, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 20, Adam's been created and he's been, he has been naming the animals. And uh, God's put a, you know, Adam named all the animals. He was a very smart man and and he had a lot to do, and I, I believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are sitting there, and they're having a conversation, and then this verse comes into play. It says, the, name, uh, the man gave names to all the livestock and to all the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field, but for Adam, there is not, not found a helper fit for him. And God created a helper to help support Adam. He made a help meet, somebody that would be there for him when he needed somebody. Uh, even the greatest of leaders every once in a while wants to just sit down and just uh, enjoy the company as somebody that is along with them, that support. Uh, I can't imagine my life without Judy. Uh, Judy has been my support. She has been my my rock at times. And uh, sometimes she's just been that swift foot in the backside and to get me going. Uh, and and But the thing is, is that I rely on her. She completes me, and she gives me the support that I need as far as human beings go. But I, I believe that we need to take it to the next level as well as far as our spiritual walk. Uh, even as a pastor uh, over the years, I've learned that I need help. Uh, I've had some good teachers, and I've had some good mentors, um, and I've I've been challenged in many cases, and but I have found... Uh, especially in the last three years, uh, maybe four, uh, that I need help. And I have to add, rely on other people to come alongside and do things that normally I would do myself or that I've had to learn that if I have a support group with me, that if they do something different than the way I would do it, but the end result's the same, I've had to learn to accept that support that I have. And I believe as we go through life, we need to find some support uh, in our in our circle, if you will. 
uh, if we're, you're married, you have that significant other. And if you've got a best friend, that would definitely be in categorized as a support group. Um, back in the Elizabethan age, how do you say that? I'm, I'm not an educator or anything like that, but uh, there was a writer, George Eliot. Now, that was a pen name. I was kind of astonished to find that this was a woman. Uh, back in those days, women didn't have a place in the workplace, so they would have a man's name as their pen name. But she wrote a book, in, uh, the no or a novel, and it was Adam Bede was the name of the book. But here's what she wrote. She said, what greater thing is there for two human souls than to feel that they are joined for life? to strengthen each other in all labor, to rest on each other in all sorrow, to minister to each other in all pain, to be one with the other, uh, one with each other in silent, unspeakable memories at the moment of the last parting. Talking about death. Um, what an awesome picture uh, of a somebody that you uh, look at as full support. And I, you know, this could very well be, um, talking about somebody that's married or, or maybe just a best friend. I've got some friends that uh, I, I cherish their opinion. I, I accept their support. Uh, and even if it rubs my hair the wrong way, I still listen to them because I can learn and, and gain from their experience and their knowledge. I, I mentioned Judy a while ago. Um, Saturday is Judy and mine's uh, anniversary. And I, like I said a while ago, I can't imagine going through life without her to help me, not just in everyday life, but in the ministry. Um, and when I'm down, uh, she's the one that I can go to. And I, I'm just, um, I'm grateful that I have that support network. Um, and there's some other things uh, that I found in scripture. And one of which, uh, I preached on here not too awfully long ago, but uh, you got Israel and they're battling against the Amalekites and, and, you know, Moses goes up on top of the mountain and he has Ur and uh, Aaron with him. And as long as Moses held his staff up, Israel won. But when he let his arms down, the Amalekites would start winning. And we see a support system come into play when Aaron and Ur start holding Moses' arms up. Uh, it took a group effort. It was team effort. And, and by doing that, Israel won the battle. Uh, and defeated the Amalekites. Uh, and that's where we need to get to a place. And, you know, what if Moses said, I've got this, and his arms fell? Uh, the outcome would have been different. And and sometimes that's the way we are. We don't accept support. Uh, you know, I, I believe that support sometimes is looked upon as something we try to avoid because we want to do it ourselves or we want to do it our way. But I believe support is something that we need to uh, step up and start thinking about as another resource that God has given us. We've talked about taking risk. If you're willing to take risk and you've got a support group, that risk is a whole lot easier to accept. Um, we talked about, um, you know, love. And we I've, I've told you how I feel about Judy. Some other stories in the Bible that that support this whole idea of support and you know, it may not be a physical person. We're talking about spiritual things or even everyday life. We have some things, you know, David, he conquered Goliath. How did he do that? By the support of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, we find that in 1 Samuel 17. The Holy Spirit guided that rock, I believe he did. Now, David could throw a sling a rock, uh, but I believe it was the Holy Spirit to give him the power to stand up as a teenager against a mighty warrior like Goliath. Uh, Noah built an ark with God's guidance. In Genesis 6, God gave him direction. So maybe our support comes from God's word. Maybe it's uh, the direction that he's given us that supports the idea or the convictions that we have. If we have the support of God's word, we can move forward and do things knowing that we're doing it to please God. Uh, Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, and God led them day and night. And we've seen that in scripture, and we've just read that. Uh, and he also, you know, he had this other guy with him named Joshua, who he continued to lead after the fact. And then Jesus himself, um, he gathered 12 men and those apostles and, and he, he you know, and, and everything that transpired that he used people and it helped 
uh, to, to spread the gospel. You know, there was disciples. Now, there were apostles and disciples, but he took those 12, and with those 12, he turned the world upside down. I think you, you get the idea. Uh, we need to rely on the Lord, uh, but I believe God puts people in our lives to help us. Um, you know, we need to just drop the pride part. I had to. Uh, I had to get off the high horse that I said I could do it, and uh, and I just it was wearing me out. And there were th mistakes I was making because I didn't have all the answers. Uh, so you have to get rid of the pride. Um, you know, let God guide you. Uh, God will put people in your life. God will put people across your path uh, that will help you. I've had uh, some of my deacons, all three of them, at different times in my ministry have stepped up and when I was just struggling and in different occasions and in, in different deacons and different and other men in the church as well. Andy's not a deacon, but I, I rely on him a lot. Rick Harris, he's done a lot to help me. Uh, and ladies too. I, I could make a long list of ladies as well. Uh, Eleanor, you know, I just thinking of her, some of the things that she does. Those are things that I look at as support, not just for me, but the church and the, the ministry. And that is really where this whole, all that I've talked about, the support network, when we were doing our Wednesday night Bible study, we had started a, a course called Real Life Discipleship. And one of the things we found in the second chapter was that we don't have to do it alone. We're on a team. It's a team effort, and we call that team the church. And then we preach a series here, uh, the second series of the year, the church is. And we realized that as we come together as the body, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, then we help one another to do different things as a uh, corporate group. And that's the reason why this COVID-19 is driving me crazy. Uh, we're, but we're still seeing the church come together. Uh, Ms. Ora put together a plan and the deacons have got on board with their wives and they're calling and they're, they're taking care of a prayer list. Uh, that is a support. That is something that we can rely on uh, each other to do different things. As I, maybe I'm working on on these devotions every day, or or the sermon for the week. And you know, I'm uh, had a big chat with you know Wednesday mornings is is Andy's and mine uh, time that we get together for a couple hours and we pray and talk about ministry and scripture that we're reading and how God's moving in our lives. But we, we had a time yesterday just talking about when we get back together, what we're going to do. We're going to celebrate Resurrection Sunday, uh, and, and we're wanting to have um, just that we got made all kinds of plans. We're going to eat, and we're going to make a day of it. We're going to have a time. Uh, but there was ideas that he had, ideas that I had, and we're going to come together. And before it happens, we're going to put some other people into the mixing pot and find out how we're going to go about it. But I tell you what, it takes support of my brothers and sisters in the church to do God's ministry. And uh, I look to those same ones, not just with the ministry, but when I'm having problems, when I'm down and out, when I'm, or if I'm on top of the world, I share it with them. Uh, there's that support circle that you have means a lot to you, Okay. If you could get to the place that you realize, and we've talked about this, is that we're not to be ourselves. We're to crucify ourselves, right? Galatians 2.20. But if we're manifesting Jesus, then we're, as, we're an integral part of the body of Christ, the church. So that is our support circle. And I pray that we would get to the place that we understand that that's the mission of the church is support for one another. Individually, we need to be going out and we need to be sharing the gospel. We need to be discipling. But then as a corporate body, the body of Christ, we need to be doing those same things with support, uh, edifying, lifting each other up and encouraging one another. And especially in these days that we find ourselves. Uh, today's verse, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and, let not, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. If we are a body of believers and we have Jesus, amen, we've accepted the Lord as our Savior, we have to trust the Lord with all of our heart. Um, that That is something that there's, 
the, the verse here says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and do not lean unto thine own understanding, period. That's not a suggestion. You have to trust the Lord with all your heart. We have to love him with all of our heart. If you're going to love him with all your heart, might as well trust him, amen? Stop trying to figure it out on your own. Stop trying to do it yourself, amen? Look to your brothers and sisters and and, and what the scripture says and how the Holy Spirit leads and all these different things that we have seen time and time again, how God can move if we'll just let him support us. Amen. Uh, I like the last part of that, or verse six, it says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. I want my paths straight. You know, you waste your time when you start running all these little side courses, chasing rabbits, if you will. Let the Lord lead you in the straight path in which he wants you to go. Amen. Uh, he said his word was a light unto our, our feet and a lamp unto our, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We have to get to the place that we trust the Lord's word, uh, and that Holy Spirit and the conviction that we've talked about many times. Um, in, in what ways has God supported you throughout your life? That's a question you need to ask. Because I what I've done is I, it's easier to trust something that you already know that works. And if you get into the frame of mind giving God the credit for what's happened or his body of believers, and we have that support circle, then we will we'll achieve much because we're going to know how it works. Uh, some things that, it, that I wrote down here that the Lord has helped me and my support and how he's, he's, he's been my network, my support that I, and around every turn is through the scripture, through the Holy Spirit, through teachers that he's put in my life. Uh, whether as a child or an older, as I've grown older, people who have spent time to try to teach me something about how to live, pastors, uh, and then just my Christian brothers and sisters. That's just how God incorporates a support network for each one of us. Amen. And that word support, we have to stop doing it ourselves. We like to say, I can do all things in Christ. And he's right. You know, Philippians 4.13, we know that. But the Lord sends people to help us all the time. And there's been so many times that he's tried to help us. And we said, no, 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 no I got it. When he had already sent us our help that we, we needed. If Christ is there and he's sending people to help you, accept that support network. Amen. Um, why is encouragement and support so important in our lives? Why, why is it so important? And I just wrote down two things. One, I mentioned it with Judy a while ago, you know, sometimes we just need a little nudge. A support network is not always there to help you or to take over a job from you. Sometimes it's to give you a little nudge, push you in a little bit and some encouragement and saying, hey, you got this. We talked about uh, uh, Marathon Runner Sunday in my message. Sometimes we just need to hear that encouragement, that little nudge that we get from our support circle. And our, so, you know, you've got, I, I have, uh, I've always said have five to 10 people that you can count on to, to call and talk to or to listen to that will help you make decisions. That supports, that's, that's huge in your support circle. And the other thing is, and, and I believe this is where we come back to the church and then the leading of God's word and the Holy Spirit is validation. If we have the right support and they're there, they're going to validate whether or not what we're doing is right or wrong. It's when we lean on our own understanding that we start thinking that that other people are wrong, even though they're quoting scripture, even though they have proven that they're right. We just get so prideful and we lean into our own understanding. Um, we need to step back. Let our support group, let those that encourage us validate what we're doing. And, and I believe we'll, we'll have a lot more success in what we're trying to do. In Thessalonians, or 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, Paul was writing to the church. The church was just in disarray, and they were going through a lot of trials and tribulations, much like we are today. Um, and he made this statement, and I believe it encouraged the body of believers. And he said, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. I'd like, I'm, I'm proud. And I, you know, I, I'm going to use the word proud. Uh, I'm grateful also 
to have a congregation that is being supportful of all the brothers and sisters right now. There are people making phone calls. There are people staying in touch. We're still doing the food bank. We've, we've got people, um, Eleanor just sent out the, the newsletter. Things are continuing to happen. Uh, Steve's been down at the church working. Uh, Rick's been working on the ventilation there at the church. All these things continue to go on, and I'm, I'm, that's the kind of support that we need to continue as a body of believers, that we're helping one another to make sure that when we get to have corporate worship again, it's all going to be, it's going to be better than what it was. And that's, that is um, just the fellowship. I'm, I'm looking so forward to that. So our attitude change I want to challenge us to do today is uh, just say it to yourself. I will stop trying to do things on my own. Um, accept help. Accept support. Accept those that try to help you. They're not trying to, you know, sometimes people are trying to tell you what to do, but, you know, a lot of times they're just trying to help. And I've had to learn that lesson the hard way. Um, i got a lot of people that like to... Uh, tell me what I need to do and how I need to do it and all this. And, and I've learned that, you know, sometimes they got some good ideas. And a lot of them, I can say, that was from the Lord. And I just pray that you'll use this word support in a new way, accepting and, and be willing to allow others to support you. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much that you give us what we need, whether it be in the form of your word, the Holy Spirit, those around us, those teachers that we have, the pastors and those that we listen to that, that spend time in your word. But Lord, I pray that as we move forward, that we will accept the support system that you have placed around us. I believe that you have allowed people to be around every circumstance that needs to be there to help to make sure that your purpose is being fulfilled. I pray that we would see that. I pray that we would change our prideful spirit. I pray we would change our way of feeling that we can do it or that we've got to do it ourselves, but that we would accept support from others and especially from you. Thank you so much that you give us everything we talked in one of the words that you provide everything we need. And that's one thing we need is support from individuals like-minded with the same faith, doing the same ministry. And I pray that we would continue to work together. I thank you for your wonderful leading. And I thank you for the truth that we read in your word that the biggest support we have is you. And we love you and we thank you for that. And we pray in your son's holy name. Amen. I pray y'all have a, a blessed day. And um, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we're going to talk about another word that fits right in with the rest of these words. And it's a good word to end the week on. And that is grace. Y'all have a blessed night. And I'll see you tomorrow. Okay.